Well, yesterday was a very rough day all across the eastern seaboard as a massive coastal low pressure system plowed up the eastern seaboard. Look at that rain band that just sat over Orion, Georgetown County that dumped over 11 inches of rain to Georgetown issuing a flash flood emergency. It has been a very long time since a flash flood emergency was issued in my area. Not to mention Carolina Forest saw seven inches of rain and we even had a confirmed tornado out of it. And recently we just got the latest report or update on this tornado from the National Weather Service. They, they called it an EF1 tornado with maximum sustained winds of 95 miles per hour. At max width, it was 150 yards wide, which is equivalent to one and a half football fields. And it was on the ground for just over two and a half miles. It started right on Sockasty Boulevard near Tyner Street with 95 mile per hour winds. It got to 90 miles per hour right near Folly Road and then crossed over the intercoastal waterway into the Arrowhead Country Club uh, or into the Arrowhead neighborhood uh, going back up to 95 miles per hour. It did lift then but by that point in time the storm was getting very very strong to where it started producing downbursts and that led to widespread damage all across Fantasy Harbor and into the River Oaks and Carolina Forest area as well. We even had a lot of damage in my neighborhood as well. Now, you might be wondering what is the difference between tornado damage and downburst damage whenever the national weather service is looking at this damage they're going to be kind of looking for everything to be in a circular shape as far as tornado goes because of all the rotating um vorticities that we have within tornadoes while a downburst is just a very long period of straight line wind so we kind of look for everything to be in the exact same direction and that is how the national weather service was differentiating between tornado damage and um straight line wind damage as well no uh no doubt that this thing was a very strong storm to say the least. And here's a look at just a few of the pictures that we've seen as far as the damage goes. This is right where the tornado touched down. As you can see, this tree fell on this person's house. A very scary thing to see. Here's Fantasy Harbor. This uh, roof was almost blown completely off, which is a very scary thing to see. My mom's gym is actually right over here. So I was really worried about her at the time. And then this was taken in my backyard by myself. Looking at this thing, you would typically think that that would be a tornado considering how strong those winds were. Thankfully, it was just a very strong downburst, but no, uh, but nonetheless, it really did scare me and my family as well. Thankfully, nobody was hurt or injured um, throughout this whole entire storm, to say the least, which is a very good thing. Moving on from that storm, taking a look at the forecast as you are heading out the door tomorrow morning for work or from school, it, or to school that is, it will be a very cold morning with temperatures starting out in the low to mid 30s. Once you factor in that wind chill, though, it is going to feel like it is in the mid 20s. So have that jacket on hand as you are heading out the door tomorrow morning and even into the day tomorrow afternoon, considerably cooler than what we were today. Temperatures only topping out in the mid to upper 40s everywhere you look. Thankfully, considering how dry the air is going to be, it will be a beautiful day to say the least, but a very cold day with temperatures once again only topping out in the mid to upper 40s. Take a look at your temperature trend as we head over the next five days. Wednesday will be probably the chilliest day we see this week aside from tomorrow, only topping out at around 50 degrees, but then gradually we will warm back up into the mid to upper 50s as we head into the end of the week and also into your upcoming weekend as well. Here's a look at that forecast as you, as you head further inland, upper 40s for your day on Wednesday, and then we're gradually warming back up into the mid uh, uh, excuse me, the mid to upper 50s, uh, mid to upper 50s that is, and even lower 60s for your Saturday. So overall, not a bad week to say the least at all. Now, Sunday looks pretty nice under probably the most of Sunday's guys, but heading into your Monday, we have, our, we have our next weather maker approaching us from our west, and that could bring us a few showers as we head into your Christmas day. Definitely not looking like a washout or anything like what we just saw yesterday, but there could be a few showers around as we head into your Christmas day. So here's a look at your holiday forecast for both your Christmas Eve and also your Christmas day as well. Mostly cloudy skies for your Christmas Eve with temperatures topping out in the upper 50s to lower 60s. Lots of clouds around as Santa is coming, as, uh, Santa is coming into town with temperatures falling into the lower 40s inland mid to upper 40s right along the immediate coastline and then with us aside from a few showers possible on christmas day it will be a lot uh it will be pretty cloudy to say the least temperatures topping out in the upper 50s to lower 60s Here's a look at your extended 10-day forecast. First off, for our coastal communities, a beautiful week to say the least, which is much needed, uh, which is much needed considering the awful day we just had yesterday. Temperatures eventually warming back up into the upper 50s to lower 60s as we head into the end of the week and also into the weekend as well. Overnight low is pretty cold the next few days in the upper 20s, gradually warming back up into the mids upper 30s for your Thursday and Friday. Here's a look at that forecast as you head further inland, mid to upper 40s for your Tuesday and Wednesday, and then we're back up into the upper 50s to lower 60s as we head into this upcoming weekend. Keep it here, Lean's Weather, for all of the latest information.